being a celebrity sometimes comes with, like everybody wants to be successful in a celebrity and stuff like that, but it comes with, you know, bull sometimes. And there have been blind items and rumors that he has abused and assaulted men as well. Here is a new blind item. I suspect the soon to step forward male victim of SA by this A-list mogul will not be the last man to do so. And again, this is allegedly Sean Diddy Combs. Accusing Diddy of abuse. What do you think about that? You knowing Diddy, do you think he's capable of doing that, man? It's in his character. That's who he is. That's what comes with power. That's what comes with arrogance. That's that's what comes with, you know, what makes him. They always want you to, you know what these rappers are always saying? It's all these big rappers that y'all look up to. They always tell you what the good part about, but you, they never tell you what the bad part. That's the, that, and that's crazy, man. Hey folks, the drama just hit a whole new level with actor Bryshear Gray standing his ground, despite rumored intimidation attempts by Diddy and Will Smith. So here's the lowdown. Bryshear supposedly filed a jaw-dropping $50 million lawsuit against Diddy and Will Smith, accusing them of SAing him and forcing him into some uncomfortable situations. Wild, right? Word on the street is that a few weeks back, a juicy blind item hinted that multiple young men in the industry were gearing up to spill the beans on Diddy. And now Bryshear seems to be leading the charge charge. But hold on, because the plot thickens. There are whispers that Diddy and Will Smith are allegedly trying to throw some scare tactics his way, maybe to keep him quiet. It's like we're stuck in a never-ending episode of Surviving Diddy. More and more people are stepping forward, and now the rumor mill suggests that Bryshear might just be the tip of the iceberg. Apparently, there are other young rappers who face similar situations with Diddy and Will Smith, and they might be gearing up to spill the tea too. The Surviving Diddy era is on fire, and the revelations are leaving us absolutely absolutely shook. The burning question is, what exactly are Diddy and Will Smith allegedly doing to silence Bryshear? And who are these other rappers who've supposedly been through the same ordeal? Let's get into it. So, let's dive into the mystery surrounding Bryshear's disappearance from the scene. Remember when he was rocking it on Empire, and everyone thought he was on the fast track to superstardom post-Empire? Well, here's the tea turns out, his exit from the industry wasn't exactly by choice. The rumor mill is buzzing with whispers that Bryshear got the old blackball treatment from none other than than Will Smith and Diddy. Why, you ask? Well, apparently Bryshear wanted out of their alleged freak-offs, and that didn't sit too well with the big names. So cue the consequences and enter the cancel culture. Poof! Bryshear was out of the industry faster than you can say Hollywood drama. Now, if you're wondering how he got into this mess in the first place, let me lay it out for you. Back in his teenage days, Bryshear crossed paths with Charlie Mack, a talent manager extraordinaire. Charlie, being the magician he is, snagged Bryshear an audition for Empire, and the dude ate it, landing the role. Fast forward to Hollywood, with Charlie playing manager and guiding Bryshear through the industry maze. Here's the kicker. Charlie wasn't just any manager. He was the plug. He had connections that could make your head spin, linking Bryshear with the big shots in Tinseltown, including none other than Will Smith. So, Will and Bryshear hit it off like a house on fire right from the get-go. And can you blame them? I mean, Bryshear was killing it on Empire and Will was all kinds of impressed. So, naturally, a mentorship dynamic kicked in, making it seem like the dream team in the making. I mean, who wouldn't want to be mentored by the Fresh Prince himself, right? Now, this sounds like a sweet deal on paper, but you know how the saying goes. Not everything that glitters is gold. Case in point, Alexis Arquette, who spilled some piping hot tea about Will's past. According to Alexis, Will's first marriage to Cherie hit the rocks because Cherie allegedly walked in on him getting cozy with another man. In the words of Alexis, when Jada comes out as and her beard husband admits his first marriage ended when she walked into him servicing his sugar daddy, Benny Medina, then I will listen to them. Yep, that's some heavy gossip right there. Now, Alexis Arquette wasn't the only one with something to say. Enter Jaguar Wright. She came out swinging, alleging that Will had affairs with several younger men in the industry. According to her, it's not all innocent mentorship. She claims that Will allegedly forces these guys into relationships, leaving them seriously messed up. And young men have left their house Screaming to get away from them in their mentorship. Meek Mills. <laughs> Bashir Gray. And here's the plot thickening even more. Trisha Paytas decided to throw some shade at Will, accusing him of allegedly making her male dancers do more than just dance. According to Trisha, these dancers were allegedly put in some uncomfortable situations against their will. Yikes. How about worry about your cheating husband my male dancers, you know, when they didn't want to? How about talk about that? 
Now, let's rewind to 2013 when federal agents had their eyes on Diddy for some seriously questionable behavior involving younger men in the industry. Reports suggested that he was being investigated for allegedly having intimate relationships with underage boys. Fast forward to Cassie's lawsuit bombshell. It was like opening Pandora's box into Diddy's private life and folks, it wasn't pretty. Turns out Diddy had a thing for male escorts, and Cassie spilled all the tea about being dragged into some seriously wild escapades, which he casually referred to as free Offs. She claimed Diddy would hire these escorts and brace yourself, force her to get intimate with them while he played director, giving explicit instructions on what to do. But it doesn't stop there. According to Diddy's former bodyguard, Jean Deal, Diddy was allegedly actively involved in these so-called freak-offs himself. Jean spilled the beans, claiming Diddy even gave Cassie a shopping list for selecting escorts, insinuating it was more for his pleasure than hers. This man had this woman search for the toots online just for them to have with her. And here's where it gets even more tangled. Whispers in the rumor mill suggest that Diddy and Will Smith might have more than just a casual friendship. For years, there have been murmurs about these two allegedly being on the down low, engaging in what's being dubbed as freak-offs behind closed doors. Initially, many dismissed these rumors because, hey, we all thought Will was happily committed to Jada. But then, plot twist, Jada herself dropped the bombshell that she and Will had actually been separated for a while. That revelation opened the floodgates, and suddenly, the rumors about Diddy and Will being more than just buddies gained some serious traction. So from the year 2016, which is seven years ago now, <laughs> yes. y'all have been apart. Yeah. Hold on to your hats, though, because it doesn't stop there. Will's former assistant and longtime friend Bilal decided to spill the beans, claiming that Will allegedly had some extracurricular activities, not only with Diddy, but also with actor Dwayne Martin. Bilal spilled the tea, recounting the time he allegedly caught Will and Dwayne in the act in Dwayne's dressing room. Picture this. Three minutes after being asked to keep an eye on Will, Bilal goes on a wild goose chase around the studio, only to open the door to Dwayne's dressing room and witness a scene that's straight out of a movie. Movie. Will bent over the couch and Dwayne, well, let's just say things got pretty explicit in there. Dwayne and having anal sex with Will. Let me process that for a second. There was a couch and um, Will was bent over on the couch and Dwayne was standing up, killing him. But hold on, because it seems like whatever was happening between Will and Dwayne was just the tip of the iceberg. According to the grapevine, the real showstopper was the alleged full-on freak fiesta that Will had going on with none other than Diddy. Sources suggest that Diddy and Will allegedly roped Bry Shear into these freak-offs, promising to boost his career in return. However, after a few rounds of this explicit lifestyle, Bry Shear had enough and opted out finding it all too much to handle. Now, here's where the plot thickens. Breischer's decision to distance himself from Diddy and Will came right before Empire wrapped up, leaving him jobless. Post-Empire, Breischer's life took a nosedive, and initially, it seemed like he might not have handled his fame well. But the real kicker is the alleged fallout with Diddy and Will, who, according to rumors, were furious that Breischer dared to walk away. Allegedly, they didn't take kindly to his departure and supposedly pulled some strings to blacklist him from the industry. Remember how Cassie spilled the tea about Diddy threatening her career when she tried to leave? Well, if the rumors are to be believed, Breischer faced a similar fate. Allegedly, Diddy and Will ruined his career as a form of revenge, and there are even whispers that they allegedly used threats to keep him silent. Ever wondered why Breischer's career didn't soar, despite having A-list mentors like Will Smith and Diddy? Well, the rumors suggest they might be the ones who allegedly kicked him out of the spotlight in the first place. All right, so after the Empire chapter closed, Breischer decided to dip his toes into the music scene, dropping some tracks that gained some traction. There were even plans for a tour in the works. But then, out of the blue, things took a nosedive, airplay dwindled, audition callbacks dried up, and he found himself ousted from the industry. It was like hitting a brick wall, and the whole ordeal took a toll on Breischer's mental well-being. The once cool-headed guy who came to LA with dreams was now a different version of himself. The downward spiral didn't stop there. Breischer started grappling with legal troubles, and in July 2020, a disturbing incident unfolded. A woman ran into the streets, seeking help, claiming to be Breischer's wife. She alleged that he had been aggressive, putting his hands on her and even choking her until she passed out. According to her, the confrontation was sparked by accusations of infidelity. Tonight, we're seeing hours of new video from his July arrest that ended with his wife flagging down police 
and telling them the actor had assaulted her for hours inside their Goodyear home. This legal storm landed Bryshare with serious charges, felony aggravated assault, misdemeanor assault, and disorderly misconduct. He eventually took a guilty plea for the domestic violence charge, scoring a 10-day stint in the county jail and a three-year probation sentence. Insiders are now pointing fingers at Diddy and Will, claiming they're allegedly the architects of Bryshear's downfall. As Bryshear reportedly hears more stories of others stepping forward against Diddy, he's decided to join the chorus. Allegedly traumatized by the rumored freak-offs, he's speaking out, asserting that the aftermath has haunted him for years. And get this, he's not backing down on the $50 million lawsuit he filed against Diddy and Will. It seems like Bryshear is ready to take his story to the forefront, holding those he believes responsible for his life's unraveling accountable. Now, Bryshear isn't the lone ranger here. YK Osiris is stepping into the spotlight with a lawsuit that's shining a whole new light on Diddy. And let me tell you, it's not pretty. This one doesn't involve Will Smith, but trust me, it's just as jaw-dropping, if not worse. The crazy part? The signs were there all along, we just didn't connect the dots. So, there's been this lingering rumor about Osiris cozying up to Diddy, raising eyebrows and sparking all sorts of questions about what was really going on behind the scenes. Whispers on the streets hinted that Osiris might have been more than just a rising star. He was allegedly Diddy's boy toy, his little plaything in the industry. Yup, Hollywood's got its own set of wild tales. Osiris burst onto the scene in 2018 with the platinum hit, Valentine, earning himself a deal with Def Jam Records. But here's where it gets interesting. His album under the label didn't quite hit the mark, and he found himself dropped in 2022. However, Osiris had some tricks up his sleeve. During his time at Def Jam, he networked like a pro and landed himself smack in the middle of Diddy's inner circle. Some even whisper that he landed on Diddy's bed. But shh, you didn't hear that from me. Even after getting the boot from Def Jam due to lackluster album sales, Osiris continued his bromance with Diddy. Initially, we thought Diddy was just playing mentor in the music game. You know, like he did with Bryshear, if you catch my drift. People speculated that Diddy might even sign him to Bad Boy Records given their tight friendship, but that never materialized. Instead, the streets were buzzing with whispers that Osiris remained quite literally in Diddy's innermost circle. Now, the rumors about Osiris and Diddy took a turn for the spicy when they jetted off to Jamaica. Now, dudes taking vacations together is no big deal, right? Happens all the time, just friends chilling. But this particular escapade had a vibe that had everyone giving them the side eye. Suddenly, it was like a puzzle and people started connecting dots left and right. So, you know how we talked about Diddy's shady history with younger guys in the industry? Well, now folks were convinced he was a allegedly grooming Osiris to be his new boy toy. The whole trip screamed extra, and it all came down to the pictures Osiris posted. Take for instance Diddy dropping a shirtless pic in the ocean. Osiris didn't just double tap, he reposted it on his Instagram stories with some grateful emojis. And let me tell you, people couldn't stop chatting about how weirdly fruity it all seemed. But hold on, Osiris wasn't done. Oh no. He took things up a notch with a post and delete move, sharing a pic of him and Diddy getting a couple's massage by the sea. Now if that doesn't scream zesty, I don't know what does. And it got even zestier with his caption, listening to that Diddy and B2K eating that good fruit in the beautiful weather. What in the world? It felt more like a romantic getaway than a bros trip. The internet had a field day dissecting these posts, and the verdict was clear. It sure as heck didn't look like they were just friends enjoying a vacation. The Jamaica trip, it turns out, wasn't exactly a buddy-buddy vacation. And here's the kicker. Diddy apparently footed the bill for the whole shebang. Now Osiris wasn't exactly rolling in dough at the time. In fact, he was broke as a joke. Just a few months prior, he owned up to being flat out broke, even having to sell off his cars and other fancy stuff just to make ends meet. Money troubles, we've all been there, right? But here's where it gets wild. Word on the street was that Diddy allegedly bankrolled Osiris's lifestyle in exchange for, well, allegedly being his boy toy. Yeah, it's kind of like the whispers circulating about his involvement with another artist, Young Miami. Now, Hold on to your seat because it gets even stranger. Osiris's ex-girlfriend spilled the tea, revealing she dumped him after allegedly catching him in bed with a man. She went straight to the gram saying, stop asking me what happened with my BD. I caught him with a man, okay? Naturally, people started connecting the dots, speculating that the mystery man in question was none other than Diddy. And let's be real, it wouldn't be the first time he's been accused of having these kinds of arrangements with younger men in the industry. Hugh Diddy's former bodyguard, Jean, who's known for dropping bombshells about Diddy's life, According to Gene, Diddy once told him, Yo, Gene, watch the door. Don't let nobody come through here. Gene played it cool, watching the door like a hawk, only to witness Diddy and a man making a speedy butt exit. And get this, Gene didn't hear it from someone else. He claims he saw it with his own eyes. And I said I watched the door, 
If I watched the door and him and a man ran out and it, and I said that, I ain't nobody told me that. I saw that myself. So things got seriously messed up in October 2022 when YK went on Instagram Live while driving, talking about how he doesn't have any industry friends left and is thinking about taking his own life. Some folks at the time kind of made fun of him, thinking he was just upset about losing connections. But YK dropped another video saying people don't get what goes down in the music biz and calling out rappers who talk about love and God, but supposedly serve the devil. Now, before all this Diddy gossip blew up, fans were defending him, saying whatever he does with his personal life is his business. But now there's this wild theory buzzing around that it's not about being gay or it's some kind of crazy ritual among industry big shots that's been happening forever. Skipping the nasty details, the theory says these powerful dudes think forcing themselves on young people, especially guys, is how they stay young. Word on the street is that this is why Diddy was pushing up and coming artists to party with him. Wild stuff, right? I just want to die. That's what I want to do. I want to die. That's what I want to do. I want to crash out right now and just like like this, this, this like life, I swear to God. But the drama doesn't stop there. Another young artist that is rumored to have faced blacklist treatment from the likes of Will Smith and Diddy is Chris Cross. One of the members, Chris Kelly, passed away in 2013 due to an OD. Rumors are swirling that his struggles with substances might have roots in some childhood trauma from his time as a child star. You know how it goes in Hollywood? Sadly, stories like this aren't uncommon. Many child stars end up battling addiction after facing predatory and traumatic experiences. Chris Cross hit the scene big time when they were just 12 and 13. Jermaine Dupri discovered Chris McDaddy Kelly and Chris Daddy Mac Smith in 1991, and a year later they dropped the massive hit Jump. It was everywhere, ruling the charts for eight weeks and going double platinum. The duo went on to release three studio albums, all produced by Jermaine Dupri, and each one was a commercial hit. Their first album, Totally Crossed Out, even hit multi-platinum status, making them the youngest and most successful musical act of the early 90s, thanks to Dupri's knack for spotting talent. So here's the flip side of the Chris Cross story. After Chris McDaddy Kelly's OD in 2013, unsettling rumors started swirling that the boys might have been groomed and possibly violated during their early careers. Chris was found unconscious at home on April 29, 2013, rushed to the hospital, but sadly passed away two days later at 34. His family confirmed he had a history of issues. Fans dug into old Chris Cross interviews from the 90s, pointing out that Chris seemed all upbeat and smiley at first, but later appeared broken and sad. The gossip mill didn't stop there. Rumors circulated for years after Chris's death, suggesting that Jermaine might have done something to Chris Cross or allowed others in the industry to do so. Now let's be clear, there's no concrete proof Jermaine did anything. It's the typical rumor mill when you have young artists being mentored by older, powerful folks in the industry. But here's the twist, Cat Williams came forward publicly calling Jermaine the P-word, even dubbing him the king of it. Back in 2011, a video popped up with Cat freestyling and going after everyone, including Diddy, Jermaine, and Steve Harvey. What's happening, Puff? I'll be back to you if JD ain't had enough. <laughs> yeah. Jermaine Dupree, king of the p if you ask me. Now with these fresh claims about Diddy allegedly trafficking his artists, fans are side-eyeing all these big shots in the industry. Recently, Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Deal, spilled the beans, saying he witnessed Diddy talking about getting Danity Kane members hooked on pimping them out. Now fans are speculating that even if Jermaine himself didn't directly harm Criss Cross, he might have exposed them to things they shouldn't have been dealing with at that young age. Kind of like what went down with Usher and Puffy in the Flavor Camp days. I'm a off and picked them out and, and, and pipped them out to my <laughs> pipped them out to my neck. He said, I'm a them out. Anyway, so ever wondered what went down with Lil Jerome, that recording artist rolling with Diddy? Yeah, because he's the next on our list. Well, seems like if you hitch your wagon to Diddy, your chances of making it out in one piece drop. Lil Jerome, who got signed to Bad Boy Records around the time they dropped Biggie's Ready to Die, had some early success. He released Too Old For Me, his first single, and it made its way onto Bad Boy's greatest hits. Diddy even hopped on remixes, throwing in some R&B versions and a remix with rapper Noor Lil Jerome also did a Stevie Wonder cover on the belly
Valley soundtrack. But then, after a couple more tracks like No Disturb Sign and Dear Yvette, the guy just vanished into thin air. All right, way back when, Lil Jerome spilled the beans on what really went down in an interview with the Bad Boy blog. When they asked if it was his call to ditch the label, Jerome spilled, nah man, it's like a mix of growing pains and the crazy music biz pressure. Dude had a nervous breakdown and Puffy figured it was best to pull the plug on the project. In short, leaving the label wasn't really his call, just a result of the situation. According to Lil Jerome, he had like 13 songs ready for an album before the breakdown hit. But here's the kicker. As he hit puberty, his voice went haywire. It wasn't your typical voice change, something about the quality just didn't work. Plus, he was dealing with reflux disease, making it tough to hit those notes. The whole situation drove both him and the label nuts because nobody knew what the heck was going on. In addition, Jerome started feeling some emotional changes, you know, puberty hitting him with all those things. Just when he was about to drop his album, life got crazy with non-stop studio time, back-to-back -back photo shoots, and bam, everything started moving at warp speed. The pressure and growing pains got real, and he hit a breaking point, had a breakdown. Here's the kicker. Diddy seemed to be like, hey, whatever. There's this story from someone on the set of Lil Jerome's Dear Yvette music video, Spillin' the Tea. Allegedly, Jerome went into his trailer for a hot minute but never came back out. Rumor has it he had a panic attack, all dressed up and ready for the camera with his family on set and everything. His mom kept saying he had a panic attack and couldn't face the world. The whole crew waited for hours while dancers and extras filmed around Coney Island, but Jerome didn't shoot a single scene. The word is that Diddy was just like, forget it, and dropped the whole project right then and there. Diddy didn't see dollar signs with Lil Jerome once he got sick, which wasn't even his fault. There were also rumors that Diddy might have wanted something more intimate from Lil Jerome, but he didn't get it. And as soon as things took a turn, Diddy wasted no time in dropping him. If Diddy truly cared about Lil Jerome, he would have taken a minute to make sure he was in the right headspace before just brushing him off. He didn't reach out to me and I would like for him to give me a call every now and then, but I think he's just scared. Word is, Lil Jerome tried reaching out to others on the label, but no one wanted anything to do with him. As for what he did next, Lil Jerome went on to earn a degree in international business, got a master's in marketing, and became a language whiz, picking up French, German, Spanish, Italian, and even a bit of Chinese. Maybe, for Lil Jerome, getting the boot from Diddy was a blessing in disguise. It could have been way worse, like Carl Thomas's story. Carl left Bad Boy Records because, when his brother passed away, Diddy called him a week later asking when he'd be back in the studio for some hits. Didn't even consider that his artist was grieving the loss of his brother. So, there you have it, folks. A bunch of young artists catching heat in Hollywood, all because they're chasing their dreams. It's kind of disheartening when it's supposed to be the big names mentoring them, right? But hey, humans will be humans, throwing curveballs and all. What's your take on this craziness? Think more artists are gonna step up and spill the tea on these big celebrities allegedly messing with their lives? Drop your thoughts in the comments and we'll catch you in the next video.